What's going on, friends? Sam Prentice here back once again. Now, last week, Prusa invited me out to Prague to a press event to see some of their new releases, which included Open Print Tag, which is an open source system that adds smart NFC tags to your filament spools. It lets your printer instantly recognize what filament you're loading, track how much is left, and makes the whole process quicker, easier, each and every time that you print. And of course, I'm very interested to see who picks that up and actually open sources and adopts this moving forward. Next was the Core One L. So the Core One L is the bigger, bolder sibling of the original. It's clearly evolved with a build volume which now stretches 300 by 300 by 330 millimeters. Yet it's actually lighter, heats up faster and packs some serious upgrades. A 1080p camera, a built-in accelerometer, automatic venting and unhardened steel nozzle. The frame has a glow up too, switching from steel to aluminium to cut weight without sacrificing strength. The chamber heater now draws from beneath the heated bed, spreading warmth evenly across the build area for excellent temperature stability. There's also some really nice changes here, but I'll be honest, I was hoping to see the Bontex system inside of this one. Still, I have a feeling that we might be seeing that at form next, and I'm excited with the possibility that that might be an upgrade path. Will we see that in November? Links, of course, for this machine will be down in the description down below. Now, I have got an email because we don't have a printer yet, which is kind of weird, right? Especially with a printer release like this. Now, apparently it has shipped. It's going to be here on Monday. The embargo for this video, of course, is 2 p.m. on the 31st. So happy Halloween to you. It says here that it's going to be delivered to me on Monday. I've also got a shipping notification as well, but you're not going to be able to buy this printer until Friday the 7th of November. So again, if the links aren't there now, they will be there later. And of course, a full review will be coming in due course. What's next? Well, next we come to Signature Oak. Now, you might remember seeing a version of this at Formnext last year, and at the time, many thought that it was just a dig at a competitor. But what started as a playful jab turned into something far more meaningful. The response was overwhelming, and people didn't laugh it off. They actually wanted it. So now, Prusa will be producing just 250 of these very special units. And this isn't a marketing move. This is a deeply personal project for Joseph Prusa himself. He shared heartfelt memories of his father, of growing up surrounded by the scent of wood shavings and the sound of tools at work. It became clear that this wasn't about competition, it was about a connection. Built from a 100-year-old oak, wrapped in timeless retro styling, the signature oak carries both heritage and heart. It's a tribute to where it all began and for those who believed in the vision from the very start. And to be quite honest with you, I really want one, and maybe you will too. So moving on, we get to see the new version of Prusa Slicer, and this one really caught my attention, because now we have project tabs. This means that no more juggling of multiple windows and separate instances, you can simply switch between projects seamlessly and just keep creating. And what I appreciate here, and what some often forget, is that Prusa really never stops working. They're still refining, they're still innovating, and whether or not you love them or criticize them, there's no denying their impact. Prusa has been one of the most influential forces shaping the version of 3D printing that we know today. So when it comes to the software side, I'm genuinely looking forward to diving in and seeing how this performs in practice. And if it's live by the time the Core One L review drops, well, you can bet I'll be giving my full rundown. Next up on the Prusa Excel, we were introduced to something completely different, silicon 3D printing. This system uses a two-tube contact mix process that blends and extrudes real, usable silicon in a way that feels surprisingly refined for 3D printing. And I got to have a chat with the company behind it. And interestingly, they actually started out printing chocolate, but this technology clearly goes far beyond novelty materials or short-term trends. It opens doors to some genuinely practical uses from flexible seals and gaskets to soft touch compounds, even potential robotic applications in the future. Now, silicon itself is a highly elastic heat resistant polymer. It stays stable under extreme temperatures, resists chemicals, and even remains flexible where most plastics would fail. So it's not something that I'm personally gonna be diving into just yet, but let's just say never say never. So there we go. Exciting times are ahead. I'm very much looking forward to form next, but some of those key takeaways there, First and foremost, Signature Oak, you're either going to love it or you're not. It's either going to fit into your lifestyle or it's not. Again, I would probably own one, but maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you would. Let me know in the comments what you feel about that. One of the biggest takeaways over this entire event has to be, though, for me, RFID. Being able to take a spooler filament and plug it into your 3D printer without messing about and Prusament have already got the RFID tags already pre-installed in any new filaments that they're now selling this one certainly has it and you can't see it here right now but it's just inside that and again if you hold your phone up to it 
let's see if this works in a practical application here let's open the phone up here we go there we go and now that will take me to the Prusa website now of course what does this really mean it means that if you put that up to your 3d printer and you go to install it it should recognize the filament type the color the the spool the weight and if we're clever about this and if the open source element works then we should get this synergy between 3d printing and material why hasn't this happened yet and of course we have seen that and certain materials have rfid chips but I think people have been trying to work out whether or not it can be monetized. And that's always dangerous. So I'm kind of really impressed that Bruce has come out with this. And it's RFID has been something that we've been talking about for such a long time. And even in the past few weeks, I've been trying to launch an initiative to kind of get people on board with doing an open source version of this. But of course, companies will always try and monetize this. So Big, big encouragement there. Thank you very much to Prusa for taking a bold step into uh, relinquishing this. And certainly I would hope that other 3D printing manufacturers, and certainly polymer makers, um, will hopefully jump on board with that. And of course, you know who I work with and you know who I talk to. So again, I'm hoping that we're going to see something there in the very future. So what do you guys think about the Core One L? Again, it looks phenomenal. It looks like a great printer, but I am going to be waiting for Form Next to see what happens there. And I do believe we're going to see a Bond Tech combo and maybe it's going to be a bolt on links, of course, for everything will be down in the description below. Let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments. Friends, we will see you next time. And again, Monday, that Core One L is turning up. So uh, I'm excited about that. Bye for now. You are watching a master work.